Hi, my name is Angela Neville, and I'm the program director for the General Surgery Residency at Harbor UCLA. During this virtual tour, we hope to give you a glimpse of who and what we are, our philosophies, and our culture. We're looking to build the next generation of surgeons, accomplished, genuine, and clinically competent. Welcome. Hi everyone, my name is Reed Ayave. I'm one of the chief residents here. And today I'm excited to be able to take you on a tour of a hospital that's very near and dear to my heart, Harbor UCLA. Hi, welcome to Harbor UCLA. My name is Alex, I'm a general surgery intern. Hey, and I'm Katrina, I'm a second year resident. We're currently walking through our atrium. This is our main hub here at Harbor. Over to the right, we have our elevators that take us up to our ICU, where we spend a lot of time as a residents, and then up to the patient floors. And then over this way, we have our ORs and our trauma bay. Hey, what are you guys hey. doing here? Aren't you shouldn't you be in the OR? We're uh, shooting a promotional video for the program. Oh. Uh, yeah. If that's the case, what do you guys love about here? Uh, well, I actually came here as a sub I and what I love then, it's the same thing that I love now. Uh, yeah. You know, the residents and the attendings really have great relationships together, very collaborative, learning, I would and agree. good friends. One of the things that I love about being an intern here is how much our chiefs get us involved in the service and get us into the OR. So just the other night when I was here overnight, Aki called me um, and had me come Aki. scrub into nice uh, thoracotomy. Oh. Oh, looks like we got some trauma coming in. You guys want to check it out? Let's head over. All right, let's go. Hi, my name is Aki. I'm one of the chief residents, and I'm going into Surgical Critical Care Fellowship next year. I'm very grateful for the opportunity Harbor gave it to me. We see over 5,000 trauma activation a year with 25% penetrating trauma, and this is our trauma bay where all the action happens. On an average call shift, you see 20 to 30 patients in the ED, hospital, and trauma bay who are critically ill. You have to make real-time decisions to figure out who needs to go to the operating room and who needs massive transfusion protocol. In addition to this, we're operating throughout the night. It's an all-hands-on-deck situation. Every member of the team, from the medical student to the attending, is integral in the care of our patients, most of whom come from the most underserved population of Los Angeles. We're fortunate here at Harbor UCLA that just four years ago, we, brand, we built brand new operating rooms, and we have 16 state-of-the-art operating rooms, including a hybrid OR. Hi, welcome to our ORs. I'm Jillian Angela, I'm one of the chief residents of surgery here. I'm gonna head to the Sim Center real quick. <laughs> She's kidding, this is OR4. This is our trauma surgery red room. It's fully staffed and ready to go at a moment's notice for any trauma that'll come in courtesy of our excellent OR staff. But really, our operative volume here is so high that our sim training really comes secondary to our on-the-job experience. Last month, as a trauma second year, I already did an x lap with my attending. I'm here with our Da Vinci robot trainer. Harbor UCLA is one of the only county hospitals in the US that offers a fully integrated and structured robotic curriculum. We start at intern year all the way through chief year, colorectal surgery, surgical oncology, and MIS bariatrics. Our beautiful surgical ICU, which is where we're located, which when I interviewed here, one of the most memorable parts of the tour was coming through this ICU because kind of the controlled chaos I was looking for. And so as a second year residents here, we spend a ton of time in this ICU and really get to run it. The Lundquist Institute is a world-renowned research institute that's located right on our campus. So that is a great thing for the residents because this means that our residents have the opportunity to make use of all that the Lundquist Institute has to offer. I think in a way I got the best of both worlds. I got really in-depth research experience, but I also benefited from the outstanding clinical training here at Harbor UCLA. Every single attending that works at Harbor is dedicated to the surgical residents. You will not find a single attending here that doesn't care deeply about both the personal and professional development of the residents. I think the, the availability of the faculty, my juniors and seniors, is really unparalleled. They give me enough freedom to kind of learn how to spread my wings and, and figure things out, but they're always available to teach and answer questions and help me out when I need it. If you want to be an independent surgeon, if you want to be that person who's ready to take care of anything that walks in the door, 
this is the place that you want to be. We have a pretty excellent approach to our surgical education platform. We like to have graded autonomy, especially in the operating room, and even in our didactics, we like to challenge residents, but without putting them in a bad place. Yeah, we have a very uh, tight bond between the faculty and residents. They're all very approachable. We could talk anything to them about any problems they have. It's one of the things that I like to do is send out potential questions the evening before our morbidity and mortality conference. At one point, somebody approached me and said, do you really think that that's appropriate to give answers to residents before an m and conference? And I said, I am not giving them answers. I am giving them questions because I want them to read. I want them to do self-learning and I want their learning to be reinforced positively by the good feelings of having a snowball's chance in heck of getting that answer right when they're asked on the spot in front of their peers. I'm inspired by the people that I work with here. How incredibly hard my chief residents and my other juniors and even my interns, how hard they work for our patients. And they never complain about it. And you know, they, when it really comes down to doing good patient care, everyone here is all hands on deck. Everyone is trying to help. And, and that to me makes it worth coming to work and worth working the long hours for these patients. I think to succeed as an incoming resident, you really have to find your best fit. And if you find a place with good people, uh, I think that's really important. And if you want to learn how to operate and you want to learn how to operate from amazing, incredible teachers that are also good people, I think you should come here. You are operating as an intern, operating as a very junior resident. Um, as, as early as your second and third year, you're starting to have leadership roles where you are taking other residents through operations or, or procedures. Um, and then certainly as a chief resident, you are almost a junior faculty member at, at points uh, running your service. And I think there's a lot of value in that um, transitioning from residency to post-residency. I came here as a student and when I arrived here, I fell in love with it because of the culture where uh, residents uh, got along great with each other as well as with the faculty. And the patient population is a very grateful group that really needs us. And uh, I have great memories as a student uh, and that inspired me to stay on here to continue that tradition of education. You know, this was my number one choice because it was everything I was looking for in a program. And I just immediately became so clear how amazing the opportunity was to train at a county facility in South Los Angeles for six years and see all the accomplishments of the chief residents from this program. Thank you for your interest in Harvard UCLA. We are so proud of our current residents and graduates. We look forward to meeting you and finding the next group of amazing and dedicated individuals to join our Harbor family. What's the best cafeteria item? <laughs> The desserts here are actually really good. I think, you know, the, the food here is not um, the best uh, or good at edible. It's not really edible, um, but the, they make cakes. You have like cake every day for lunch. It's like a little bit crazy, but that part is good. Uh, I think everybody would probably say the tater tots by the time you're done here, just like Malcolm Gladwell's book about 10,000 hours. Uh, you'll do, you'll probably eat 10,000 tater tots and that's when you know you're ready to move on. Our cafeteria may not be the best ever, uh, but, uh, you know, our, our, a lot of time when you're taking call and trauma call, our faculty and attendings will buy you dinner. And coming from South Carolina, I don't think we necessarily have the best of all kind of diverse cuisine, no knock on my home state. But, uh, man, the Thai food and the Mexican food, half the time I don't even know what I'm eating, but it is truly to die for. Yikes. Diet Mountain Dew been a favorite for 14 years. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm actually kind of fond of their chicken, so it, I, I think the, the key there is just don't take such a big bite.